Hey everybody, this is Random Fix, and we are by the Sprinter. Sprinter, as you guys know, is a diesel vehicle, so I get a lot of questions about diesel smogs. So in this video today, I'm gonna to cover this with you guys a little bit more in depth, as I'm actually selling the vehicle. And in California, it is the seller's responsibility to provide the smog. So I wanna make sure that my vehicle is ready for smog. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys about some of the things that you should watch out for and explain to you some of the differences between the diesel and the gasoline smog. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we got a diesel vehicle here and this vehicle needs a smog to be transferred to the newer owner. And I'm gonna be talking about California a lot as it kind of sets the standard and if you guys don't have some of these rules in your state, don't worry about them. You're gonna have them as well as it's becoming a pain in the neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover how you can make sure that you pass smog 100% of the time on your diesel vehicle without any issues. So this is what you're gonna need. This is a simple 20 or $30 tool. I'll have a link to it in the video description. This is the connector. This will work on any vehicle 1996 and newer. So the diesel vehicles included. All you do is go ahead and connect it to the vehicle. And once it's connected, you wanna make sure your ignition is on. And you can tell that the ignition is on because the check engine light is on right there, but the engine is not running. We got the scan tool and this scan tool has this little button right here. It says IM, this stands for inspection monitors. So the ins inspection monitors are what basically let the computer know that hey we're ready to go ahead and test and a lot of times when you go down to a smog station they're going to go and plug your vehicle into there and then they're going to check all these monitors so we can see that this has the check engine light is off there's no dtcs or diagnostic trouble codes basically everything here needs to be completely ready and we can see that we have one incomplete monitor right there which is going to be the hrt but the rest of these are going to be ready and depending on where you live, some monitors can be actually exempt. So I think I'm going to be okay. So we have no check engine lights. There is nothing pending. You want to make sure that there's no pending codes or permanent codes. You cannot delete a permanent code. So if you guys want to learn more about a permanent code, I'll include a link for you guys about permanent codes down below and at the end of the video as well. So you guys can see the catalyst is ready. The catalyst heater is ready. The oxygen sensor is ready. The air is ready and the EGR is ready. One of the monitors you will see that doesn't exist on the diesel is going to be the EVAP. And the EVAP basically is going to control the vapors of gasoline going into the atmosphere. At the same time, you're still bound to a lot of the same rules. So what they're going to do when you go down to the smog station, they're going to go and do a quick visual and make sure that the check engine light is off. Some shops will go ahead and check your vehicle with their own little dinky tool like this and see if there's anything that's pending that's gonna basically cause you to fail. And if you are gonna fail, some shops will basically tell you you're not ready and they'll tell you to go hit the road and go drive a little further and no other instructions are given. And they do this a lot of times to go ahead and save themselves the trouble of having to go and potentially get into a situation with the local smog board in their area as a lot of the gasoline vehicles are exempt from the evap for example so they'll have you go drive even though they can pass you they don't want to take the chance and if that ever happens to you one shop doesn't want to smog you just go to the next shop so they're going to do a quick visual on the dash they're going to go and verify that you have no special harnesses running here as sometimes people have tuners and they'll put them right here with the on and off switch and and they're gonna go and do some investigations. They're also gonna look underneath the hood and they're gonna check for modified turbos, modified intakes. So if you have an intake and it's not gonna be CARB legal or California Air Resource Board legal, you need a special sticker that with the executive order. If you don't have that sticker, you're gonna have to contact the vendor and send them a picture and they'll send you the sticker. There's gonna be a little bit of a hassle there they're also gonna check your exhaust. So what they do on the exhaust side, they're gonna come and start the vehicle and they're gonna do a snap test. So what that is basically a quick throttle and they're gonna visually make sure that you're not putting out a big cloud of smoke. And you gotta really watch out if your vehicle is doing that. A lot of places here in California, they basically want you to call 
on each other in case you see a vehicle down the street that's putting out a lot of exhaust you call a special number so try to avoid that anyway it's not good for the environment if you guys are going through that so again they're checking for modified intakes they're checking for missing catalytic converters they're checking for smoke and upgraded turbos egr deletes and anything else that they can visually see like an unplugged in hose so sometimes people unplug one of the hoses from the turbo just because it'll go ahead and spool up a little faster and basically that's a no-no and they'll fail you if there's cracks in the hoses they'll go ahead and fail you for that if you did not buy the vehicle new you'd probably want to go in the engine compartment and visually do a quick inspection make sure there's nothing colorful if you see a, a orange cane filter here make sure that that number is there look down at your headers exhaust system and make sure everything is going to go and look factory and it sounds factory if it doesn't sound factory they're going to start digging around and these guys at the smog shops really get penalized heavily if they passed a car that is not supposed to pass and these guys know they're being set up sometimes by these agencies and they send them audit vehicles where they've basically made alteration on the vehicle that should not allow it to pass but the shop might pass it and then these guys are going to get into trouble anyway I know a lot of smog technicians and they tell me the stories and a dead giveaway is when they pay with a hundred dollar bill so if you guys are in the smog business and you're watching this video if you've come across this go ahead and comment down below as it solidifies what I'm trying to tell everybody which is don't cheat make sure you do all your work ahead of time before you go down to the smog station don't get these guys in trouble they have family just like you and I and nobody needs that headache so do a quick inspection here you want to make sure that these are going to be stock so if you guys have any extra wires running to your computer that are not needed maybe you bought the vehicle second hand make sure you guys go ahead and get rid of that as a lot of the technicians that do these smogs really get worried and scared when they see that as they don't know your intentions that you just want to get your smog done they might think you're from one of those agencies so get rid of that and make their job really easy and one thing about catalytic converters if your vehicle did not come with a catalytic converter, let's just say it's an older diesel, you don't have to worry about that. So you don't need to go and install a catalytic converter on a vehicle that never came equipped with it. I'm going to go ahead and jump behind the computer here. We're going to just visit the California Air Resource Board really quick. And we're going to take a look at what's currently exempt as the rules are always changing. That way you guys can reference this anytime you want in the future. And it's pretty cool information to know if you do own a diesel as these are just becoming very problematic to own in California. So if you guys agree with me, give the video a thumbs up. That way I know you guys are going through some of the same frustration with the higher diesel prices. Just the amount of effort they're putting in to get these off the road even though they are very nice vehicles. If you have a 2010 and newer, make sure that you reference this video and watch in its entirety so you can understand what a permanent diagnostic code is and how you can actually unlearn this. And here I'm on the state website. I don't know why it's showing up like this, but nonetheless, if you do a quick search for diesel, you will see that it gives us reference to how many monitors can be unset and still pass. So 1998 to 2006, all the monitors have to be ready. 2007 and newer, any two monitors can be unset. And if you're experiencing some issue with your diesel vehicle and you're not sure why, we can actually check which vehicles are affected by inherent defects so over here we have a chevy issue and if you go down the list we have more chevys there's a ram diesel issue here and you can check out the list entirely here and find out what you need to do to go ahead and get this problem solved it will go ahead and give you some instructions here and you could possibly get some financial help it will go ahead and let you know on the right hand side so here's going to be a quick little recap. Make sure you unlearn all permanent diagnostic trouble codes. This will affect vehicles 2010 and newer. Double check to ensure your check engine light is off. And check engine light that is on is an automatic failure. They're going to do a smoke test and basically just snap the throttle to make sure you're not blowing a big cloud of smoke out the rear. And the less smoke that you have, the less possible issues. So double check everything. And as a pro tip, clean up around the exhaust pipe. So wipe everything down before you walk into the smoke station. So that way you'll go ahead and not get additional attention for smoke. 
They're gonna ensure that your vehicle has catalytic converters if they were equipped from factory. They're gonna look at the EGR and any possible modifications such as EGR deletes or any cold air intakes. As a pro tip, if your vehicle is over seven years old, make sure you clean the mechanical part of the EGR valve as it gets really gunky and you can clean this with the carb cleaner. Make sure you do not touch any of the sensors while you're doing this and you want to ensure you do this every five or seven years. If you haven't done so, it'll give you a much better chance of passing and you won't get any weird check engine lights. And as a final recap, go ahead and make sure that all the tuners are off the vehicle. After the tuners are off, go ahead and clear the inspection monitor data, then complete a drive cycle. And I have drive cycle information for every vehicle. So if you guys check the links, you guys will go ahead and find those videos there and once all the monitors are set you are all set to go ahead and get the vehicle smogged remember that some monitors are exempt depending on what year your vehicle is and 2008 was the very last years before the def requirement was put into place so the def is going to be the diesel exhaust fluid and if the video was helpful, guys, make sure you guys comment down below. Let me know why. If it wasn't, that's okay. Let me know as well. And if you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up as it really lets YouTube know that I'm bringing you guys valuable content. And to make the process of getting your vehicle to pass smog the very first time and more understandable, I have a playlist here with 44 videos. And in the playlist, you'll see the drive cycle in action. You'll also get help for individual monitors, such as a catalyst. I have vehicle specific videos here. So this one is for General Motors, this is for Toyota. And then I actually will show you what the process looks like when you visit a smog station. So you guys will see that in this video right here, which says emissions drive cycle tips. And you'll find a link to this playlist in the video description box down below, as well as some of the little OB2 readers that I recommend and also at the end of the video here. Thanks again.